messages, and attributes. I gotta switch around through some programs here. There we go. So when we last left off, we had made this um, fabulous timer, and we were able to do a couple things with it by sending messages here and there, and that those messages were a certain kind of data that we were sending around and storing in these objects and of course um, we used other objects that had functions but since today I'm talking about messages I wanted to show you new kinds of messages so um, let's just take your typical message and pull it down here uh, actually, let's let's bring perfect cup of tea down here so that we have something to look at while we're while we're doing that. So, perfect cup of tea. We see that the the data that gives us the letters for perfect cup of tea comes in the right hand inlet here. Now, there's other messages that you can send to objects, and for objects that. Um, you can affect them and so how would we find out how we can affect this object well let's click on it so it's selected and then either come over here and click on the I for inspector or hit uh, command I on a Mac I imagine that's control I on a PC and you get because this is selected you get the message inspector make sure that all over here is selected instead of just recent things or something like all. Everything that we can send to this message is over here. Now, down at the bottom, there is a little sign that says at, and it says hide attribute names. We're going to click on that. I'm going to move the inspector over here so it's bigger. Um, and if you click on this again, you can see that these are the attribute names here and then this is the actual attribute itself. So that means that I can send this message over here. I can send it something that says BG fill color. Well gosh, I wonder what that means. So let's let's just um, try it out here. We'll come over here and we will type a message that says first we type the letter M and we type B G fill color it's actually filling in for me there and now um, because I sort of know where we're going with this I'm gonna say let's type a 1.0 a 0, 0.0, another 0, 0.0, and then a 1.0. And now I will explain what it is that I'm doing. In Max, your colors are described as numbers between 0 and 1 decimals, and it goes R, G, B, A. So A is alpha, which means how um, opaque it is, I guess you would say, if, since it goes up to one, or how transparent it is if you're going towards zero. Uh, zero being completely com transparent and one being completely opaque. So that means we have one full amount of red, zero amount of green, zero amount of blue, and it's completely opaque. So when I send this message, to perfect cup of tea, what do you think is going to happen? Well, let's lock our patcher and find out. I locked my patcher and now I click on it. Boom! Okay, so the BG fill color is background fill color, and there it is. It's filled in the message with red. If I was to go back to this, I'm going to unlock my patcher, go back to this, and change this from one to zero for red and zero to one for green you can probably guess what's going to happen i just lock my patcher again and i hit it bonk 
And there it is. So you're probably already wondering, well, a couple things. One, is there an easier way to do this? And can I do it to other objects? Well, let's try the simple thing first. We'll see if we can do it to other objects. I'm just going to unlock my patcher real quick here. And let's run this over to a number. Now, if this worked with the number, click. Oh, big surprise. It doesn't work. Why not? Well, we can find out very quickly. And I'm going through this sort of failure mode here so that you can know when things don't work, there's always a remedy. So let's unlock the patcher again and click on a number box. And we go over and we look for the background color. And lo and behold, because a number has different, um, I don't even know how to say it, different reason, it has different types of colors, it changes what they're called. So it's actually just background color, BG color for a number. So we could make a separate um, uh, message for number, or we could do something uh, more along these lines. Okay, so we wanted um, background color. So let's make a new object here. And I love learning new objects. Prepend B G C O L O R. Okay. This means that any message that comes through here, we're going to stick BG color on the front of it. And while we're at it, let's just duplicate that. And we'll make the BG fill color because now we're going to use a different there we go. So now we've got um, one that prepends BG color, one that prepends BG fill color. And since I'm going to go up here and just get rid of that, because whatever message I send from here now, I'm going to take this. Here's a new trick here. You're ready. You're moving your box around and you push the shift key down and then you move it between these over this patch cord. Oh my goodness, it lit up, let go of your object, and it jumps right in there. Is that handy or what? Just hold the shift key down. I'll do it with this one too. Grab this, hold the shift key down, and wait for the patch cord to light up, and then you let go of the object, and boom. Okay, now, so that we can tell that something's happening, let's go back in here. <laughs> Maybe we could be even more interesting. We could, well, let's leave it for the moment. Okay, let's go back in here and say, change green to zero and change blue to one. Okay, so now if it works, it's gonna change these blue. So we lock our patcher and we come up and we hit it. Boom, look at that. So we, our background, just background color has turned blue and our perfect cup of tea, though I would never drink a cup of tea that was blue, has turned blue. Okay, so for whatever object you want to change the color of, just for example, or the text color, or any of its other attributes, you can simply highlight the object and then go over here and find it. Oh, I want to change the text color to blue or I want to blah, blah, blah. You know, there's other attributes too besides, uh, besides color, um, such as when we look up here, we say, oh, look, it's hidden. Oh, well, how exciting could that be? So let's make a message that says hidden. And I happen to know this already. We'll make one that's hidden zero. And now I'm going to click on this and duplicate it. Option, click, drag. Now I've got two of them. And I'm going to say hidden one. Okay. The very smart people here might say to themselves, Hey, wait a second. Couldn't he do that with prepend? Yes, he could. So, but, um, here we go. I'm going to connect hidden zero. 
going to connect hidden one to the number, lock the patcher, and let's see what happens. Okay, there's hidden zero. Oh, hidden one. So one being yes, hidden, and zero being no, not hidden. So there it is back, hidden one, hidden zero. Phew, this is exciting stuff. Now, I'm going to I'm just going to erase these for the moment to get them out of our hair. Let's take a look at and we don't need to label that as a counter anymore. I just want some space here. Let's take a look at this and see if there's anything we can do to make our lives slightly more easy here. There happens to be a thing that makes colors in Max. So let's type the letter N and start typing swatch. And there it is. And you're probably expecting an elegant silicone wrist silicon wrist silicone wrist banded watch made in Switzerland. But that is not what you're going to get. You are going to get this. Okay? And this is a color picker, more or less. You can make it bigger to make it easier to pick. Um, and what it does is uh, when it's locked, it allows you to get a color out of it. So let's connect. So RGBA, remember we said that before, RGB and A, just like our four letters there. And this other one is saturation. Okay, well, we know what saturation is. We'll get to that later. So RGBA out. For now, I'm going to run it just over to this message. Whoop, hey, I didn't tell you to do that. I told you to do that. Over to the message box, just so we can see it. And then when we, I'm locking my patcher. And now when we move this around, <laughs> wait, let me, let me resize this. Whoops, unlock. Resize the message box so we can get a good look at it all four of its digits. So we can now see that um, when we're moving over here that we get um, 0 0.9 for red, 1.0 for green, 0 0.197. So there's very little blue in there and we're still getting a full alpha channel. Okay. And um, but we should note that this only um, sent these colors down here because I accidentally clicked on this without thinking about it. Otherwise, the numbers just change because this patch cord goes in the right-hand inlet, not in the left-hand inlet. Um, yeah, which you could do, but it's uh, slightly more complicated. I'll explain that in a second, too. So it's going in the right-hand inlet, so it's just changing the inside, but it doesn't send it out through the outlet yet. So let's take a look at a really good blue here and see if we can get perfect blue. Perfect blue? Is it even possible? Uh, we're so close. Look, 0, 0 0.02, 0 0.8. So a lot of blue there. Let's see if we pull this down, do we get more blue? or less. More? No. No. Uh, right in there somewhere is our maximum amount of blue. I can't quite get it up to zero, but boy is it close. 0 0.969. Okay, so if we click on this, essentially these two will then turn the color of this swatch. So we'll go over here to light blue and click it, and that turns them again. Okay, so I really did this so that you could see the numbers, but we don't need to see the numbers. We can actually just get what we want here by having that come out to directly to, I'll move this off to the side just to prove that it's not connected. See, nothing under here, nothing nothing holding that up. And it's coming right out here. It's getting prepend pre background fill color, prepend background color. And now when we lock our patcher, we can just 
change those at will. Hey, pretty nice so far. Right? So there it is with just our background color attribute. Super duper. That green's really hard to read. I'll leave it on blue for the moment. And now I'm just going to show you one last object before we start kind of imposing uh, multiple things on this. And that is, it's called the preset object. So let's unlock our patcher and type in N and then type preset and just click outside to see it says it preset right there. Click, click, click. Okay. Preset. What are you going to do? So take a look at this. The preset, these are a bunch of buttons, though none of them are active yet because they don't have anything in them to be active about. What you do with a preset um, is you take the, you go from the left hand outlet to the left hand inlet of a graphic user object. I'll, I'll just show you this so that you can believe me. Um, I'm going to get that out of the way. I hate when stuff crosses over in front. Okay. So they're both connected now to the preset. How do you set the preset? I lock my patcher and I move to a color that I want. Let's just say red-ish. There it is, red-ish. I go up to number one. I hold the shift key down and I press it. Click. And then you can see that it is active, right? If I click on number two, it's not doing anything because number two doesn't have anything stored there. So let's store something there. Let's make it yellow now and we'll go up to number two and we'll push shift down and click that. Oh, let's just keep going. We'll move it over to green and we'll shift click number three. There we go. That's it. That should be enough at least to screw up traffic for a while. So there, if I push on number one, click, it's that reddish color. Number two goes to yellow. Number three goes to green. Hey, you could be designing your own traffic lights here. But wait, you say, isn't there something more I could do than just run through this silly pattern? Um, there is. There's a way that you can make this do this um, all by itself. And let's uh, just very quickly see what that is. Uh, take a try at that. Remember up here we have our U menu and 10 seconds it puts out a zero. 30 seconds puts out a one. Perfect cup of tea is a two. Um, we could trigger these one, two, and three probably by using this number. So, but let's unlock our patcher, type N for a new object, and then type plus one. Okay, now why would I do that? I would do that because since this is going to put out a zero first, and I don't have any um, zero selections, or at least I don't think I do. We'll probably find out that we do. So if this puts out a zero, this will get a one, and hopefully we'll just follow along with that. So here we go, locking our patcher. We say 10 seconds, and look at that. Everything turns red, because I put a one in there. Zero plus one equals one. 30 seconds, it turns yellow. Perfect cup of tea turns it green. So that means then that if I go ahead and move this over to blue and shift click on four and then move it over, oh, that was sky blue, then to a sort of uh, ultramarine blue there. Um, and go ahead and shift click six. Uh, you might notice that it doesn't change the setting here if you do that. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, 
Uh, let's do one more here, and we'll have to get something like uh, magenta, and shift click on the next one. There we go. So that's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. That was it. So now going back to this, we can get a perfect cup of tea. It is green, soft boiled egg, light blue, and hard boiled egg is dark blue. Of course, you could make that more interesting. So one last thing to consider is that the preset can handle more than one object. So um, let me unlock my patcher, make a little bit of room here. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the uh, what's it's called, inspector, and just move it over out of the way so we have a little more space. I'm going to grab these three objects, option click on them, and move them over here. And then we can say, uh, this one's not going to be background color, it's going to be text color. And um, this one, uh, what could it be? You know, we could just get rid of it for the moment, you'll get the idea. So if this one's going to change everything to text color, we'll just connect that to the hard-boiled egg, holding down my shift key, and also connect it to the number box, letting up my shift key before I do it. And now, let's just make sure it works. So if we move this around now, we can get all different colors of text. Nice. And if we unlock our patcher again and connect this preset to this swatch, let's notice something here. Lock your patcher. If you click now from one, two, three, do you notice this one's not moving at all? Four, five, six, okay? not moving at all. It doesn't care. It'll go wherever. It, do, it doesn't matter if you move it or anything. That's because you haven't stored any um, any presets for this object yet. So let's go back to one and it's bright orange. What would go nicely with orange? Maybe uh, green. It probably wouldn't, but or something you can read. Well, white looks good. Let's put it up at white above orange just so we can remember it. Now you go shift click on the one. Now, before you do the next one, you want to click on it regularly to just get it to that next color thing. So this was the one that we really need new text on because it's yellow. So let's find something that we can actually see on a yellow, a yellow background. No. Bright green looks so nice. Kind of. Maybe orange. Let's say. Let's say green. So there we go. Now that's there. This is already on two. And if you shift click it, then it will save that position. So now if you go back to one where it was orange, this go jumps up here. If you go to number two, it jumps down there. If you go to number three, nothing go back to one, it jumps up there. If you go to three again, it just stays because there's just nothing entered for it. So you have to go through and find something that works for each one. Let's just say you wanted yellow for this one because you thought that was cool looking. And you want, to, uh, let's go to the next one, click on four. Oh, sky blue. Wouldn't that look great with some, some of that, uh, you know, that always bugs your eyes when they, uh, get the same color pink as the same tone pink as blue. There you go. It's kind of Dr. Seuss there. And we'll shift click on that. And then we'll go to the next one, five. Uh, that's dark blue. So let's make it uh, light blue, light blue, light blue. There we go. 
and shift click on that. And I know these other ones aren't necessarily used, but we can still have them. Um, that's handy. Sorry about that. My session is about to expire. What was I doing? Um, purple, maybe, nah, something closer to white looks better. Greenish? No. Bluish? No. Yellow? Sure. Why not? There we go. Okay. So now you have a whole bunch of presets, and you'll see each of these move around strangely. I'll click one, and they go all the way over there. There's two, there's three, and you can read all of them. And that makes for a nice interface. So that's it. That's going to be it for this week. See if you can get yourself a, this setup working, and then you'll see that you can read all the things that are the presets for your timer. Very nice. Well, thank you for watching, patch well, and I will see you in the next tutorial.